Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am doing a video inspired by Joss Jane from Joss's Fragrance Mixology and I will be talking about different fragrances for the different kinds of aesthetics. She actually filmed an aesthetics fragrance series. I'm going to link that playlist down below. We will be going over different kinds of aesthetics like maximalist, minimalist, bohemian, and romantic and I also added some of my personal choices. So let us start the list with the granola aesthetic or the earth gore. Granola or earth core is anything that has earth related aesthetics and that is what we call today as the modern day hippies. So I have one fragrance here that I immediately thought of when she talked about granola aesthetic and this one is Lily from the house of Theodoros Kalutinis. So this one by the name it is a Lily fragrance. Aside from the strong Lily in here I get a lot of patchouli. So every time I talk about Theodoros Kalutinis fragrance fragrances i always mention the patchouli that he uses in fragrances it is a beautiful potent earthy kind of patchouli it's dark and i get that a lot in this fragrance so i chose this one because lily here is also very forward it's not your typical like very florally perfumey kind of lily this one has a gourmand feel to it but lily is very earthy so when i first smelled this one when i first got this fragrance i didn't really know how to you know react with this one because i got tons of patchouli and it wasn't really what i expected with the name but this is a beautiful fragrance and I immediately thought of this one when Joss um, filmed her granola earth core video and yeah because of patchouli here this is what I consider as a perfect earth core fragrance so this is Lily from Theodoros Calutinis it's so smooth you guys it's smooth it's sweet but it's earthy and patchouli here is really strong if you love the chuli, I highly suggest you guys to try Lily. I want to add another fragrance belonging to that earth core granola aesthetic. This one is from the House of Aramis Perfume Calligraphy Saffron. This one is a saffron forward fragrance. Marigold is also very forward here. Aside from those green floral kind of notes, this one has prominent notes as well of tonka bean and vetiver. Every time I smell this, I just think of places like Bali, India, Thailand or something like something that has a lot of spices and um, green you know the jungle somehow like that's the whole image that I get when I smell this fragrance this one is really smooth and it's very well blended this is another fragrance that I have that just gives me that earth gore granola modern day hippie kind of aesthetic because of the green ambery quality that this one has so this is perfume calligraphy saffron from Aramis the next aesthetic is the bohemian. So bohemian, modern day hippies, or the granola and the bohemian aesthetic, they can be interchangeable, but I just think of gore and granola as being more grounded while bohemian is more of the fashionable kind of um, aesthetic like think of coachella that's what i think of and this one is my ultimate bohemian fragrance it's from bohemian revs desert fleur so it's very aptly named this one can actually really work as an earth core fragrance or granola aesthetic fragrance um, this is a sweet vanilla patchouli scent but i chose this one for the boho aesthetic because of the name it comes from bohemian revs this one is really nice as well i love this fragrance it's one of my most favorite and every time i talk about this fragrance i always say i'm going to get all the others from the house but i always you know forget to get them oh this is so good this is a very friendly kind of a patchouli scent because it has tons of vanilla here and vanilla here is more that kind of a natural vanilla it has some green qualities to it as well green floral facets so i don't really know all the other notes but i know this one has um strong notes of vanilla and patchouli i have another one this is flora botanica i thought of this one as a modern bohemian kind of scent only because this is very green and aromatic and spicy it is not a scent profile that you know everyone would really love right away but you know it's unique enough for you to be really interested in trying it aside from you know mint and rose and 
other greener aromatic notes this one also has cannabis because of that i thought of it as a bohemian kind of scent but in like a very modern kind of way like think of vanessa hudgens like this is the scent that i would think of you know for her as a bohemian like a modern bohemian kind of scent so this is flora botanica from balenciaga and I have another one. I keep on adding fragrances. This one is Behold Patchouli from Gallagher Fragrances. This has orange citruses, frankincense, chocolate. You guys can read it here. Patchouli, honey, amber, and musk. So if you guys have been here for a while, I always describe this one as a Jaffa Cakes scent. So it smells like chocolate and orange to me. So it's a very beautiful candied orange. Patchouli here is also very forward in the scent and it is paired deliciously with that honeyed amber and musk. It's just beautiful. It's, it's a gourmand kind of a patchouli scent with focus on honey and citruses. So this is Behold Patchouli. Now let us go to the dark or gothic kind of aesthetic and I have this fragrance here this was one of my immediate choices this is Andrea Max craft so just by the name and the whole look of the bottle it just fits the whole aesthetic but don't be fooled and intimidated by the name and you know the whole bottle the whole look of it because this one you guys is a beautiful aldehydic rose fragrance this soft it is powdery it has a little bit of metallic quality to it but it just works perfectly with the rose it is a very simple scent it's simple it's quiet it, but you know it has that personality and you know mixing florals and aldehydes and some spices as well i think this one also has some spices like pepper i know andrea mack loves to use pepper in her fragrances so um yeah this is craft i could have chosen other fragrances with a dark aesthetic but i just wanted to focus on this one now let us go to the minimalist aesthetic and i chose two fragrances i actually wanted to choose more fragrances but this video will take forever. So I chose this one from Essential Parfums. I have been loving this. This is the musk and this one is mainly a musk and lavender kind of a scent. It's really beautiful. It's simple. It's straight to the point. Yes, it's linear. It's powdery. It's fluffy. It's cloudy in a way. It makes you feel really clean and fresh and put together because of how lavender is and you know that added oomph because of um, beeswax this is really really nice i love this the musk by essential parfums and i chose another one belonging to that clean girl minimalist aesthetic this one is Oolong Infini from Atelier Cologne and this is a tea fragrance but I get a lot of Neroli here. So aside from tea, it has Neroli, it has some citruses. Just like with the musk, this one is straight to the point. It's simple, it's clean and just the whole look of the bottle, the juice color, it just makes you think of, you know, white shirts. It makes me think of white shirts and, you know, simple kind of a personality, you know. So this is Oolong Infini by Atelier Cologne. Let's go to the maximalist aesthetic and I chose different kinds of fragrances. I chose this one first, John Pateau 1000. This is a very classic fragrance and it could belong to that vintage classy aesthetic. But I chose this one for the maximalist because this one just gives me, you know, like um, strong, independent businesswomen vibes because of the look and the name 1000. I mean, you can't go be as maximum as 1000, you know. And this one in terms of a scent profile, this is an aldehyde forward fragrance with tons of florals and you have to love 90s, 80s kind of fragrances to really appreciate this one because even though this was released in um, early 2000s um, this one gives you that very vintagey vibe because of the aldehydes in here it takes a lot of balls and guts to you know wear this one especially right now where florals and gourmands are the thing so another maximalist scent that i have is another floral it is own rose by frederick mal and this one has i think Think some berries in here if I'm not mistaken but I know this one has rose patchouli and wine so as a fragrance itself this is very forward on rose rose here is very jammy but it can also lean dusty and um, mature but I really love it and just like with John Pateau's 1000 you know it takes a lot of you know balls to wear this one this is really beautiful signature scent worthy but as an occasion kind of a signature scent because this one is really strong it's really potent and um, and you have to love your rose fragrances to appreciate this one um, I really love this 
Un Rose by Frederick Mall for that maximalist aesthetic. And I think I have another one too. This one is 100 Whispers, a clone of 100 Silent Ways. So this one is really sweet. It's fruity, it's sweet, it's floral. And I chose this one for the maximalist aesthetic because it's just everything. It's sticky sweet, it's super floral, it lasts super long, and it projects really wide. It's the kind of scent that sticks um, to things and you know fills up a room and just leaves a cloud of scent everywhere you go, especially if you overspray. So definitely a maximalist kind of aesthetic. You can definitely turn heads and bodies with this one if you wear this. And again, if you spray more than five times every time you walk around, especially when you wear this during warmer weather, this can really, really fill up a whole room. So 100 Whispers from Dua Fragrances, and this is the clone for 100 Silent Ways. Now let us go to one of my favorite aesthetics, the vintage aesthetic. And I chose Lulu by Cacherelle. I mean, the whole bottle, the whole look, and the scent. This is just, you know, like vintage scent for me. This was actually one of the most difficult aesthetics to choose fragrances from because I love vintage fragrances and I love strong florals. And I do have a um, soft spot in my heart for vintage fragrances. So, you know, I wanted to choose all the fragrances that I have, but, you know, I had to choose a couple and this is one of my first choices i could have chosen coriander i could have chosen eden but lulu just you know takes the place do i dare spray this one yes i will yes this oh my gosh i can't really explain how unique this one is it's strong but it's also soft at the same time scent profile it's a sweet floral it has some creamy qualities. It's very powdery, I get that, but this one develops into like a very strong floral. Like somehow, you know, it starts a very soft and then it becomes like a stronger floral as it develops. So I just sprayed two or three times and I know the entire bedroom is gonna smell like Lulu and somebody is gonna be pissed. And that is the mister that will be pissed, but I will smell really, really good. So the vintage aesthetic definitely goes to Lulu. I mean, the reputation of Lulu should definitely give her that spot. And I think I chose another vintage fragrance. How can I not see this one? Taboo, just by the name itself. I love this bottle. Like the longer I have this in my collection, like I really appreciate it. Gives you definitely that like great Gatsby kind of vibe, you know, the whole font, like art deco kind of bottle. This, I wanted to choose um, Obsession by Calvin Klein, but I chose this one because this beats Obsession. This is very amber, resinous forward, tons of citruses um as my son would describe this one this is very um cinnamony he would describe this one as very cinnamony oh my husband's gonna be really pissed with all the vintage fragrances that i sprayed this one is really nice i really enjoy wearing this but i have to say i really have to be in the mood to wear this and i have to be ready that i could really trigger my migraines when i wear this because this is really strong i could only imagine how strong and potent the original formulation is because i know i have the um, newer um, formulation i really love this did i choose another vintage fragrance i don't think so i think that's oh this one insolence by garlan this is more of that very victorian romantic era in terms of the vintage era if you know like taboo is more of um the 1920s 1930s or something and lulu would be more of i would say 40s 50s this one is that very victorian powdery make a pea kind of a scent so as a scent profile this is a very sweet purple floral scent raspberries or red berries as the top notes and this one has iris and violet and the whole look itself also embodies that vintage aesthetic and this can also definitely work for the 60s 70s kind of scent profile you know with the poofy um, skirts and the hairdos and all of that so yeah i had to choose this one as well insolence edt i have the edt and now let us go to the flirty feminine aesthetic and i chose this one I think this is the only fragrance that I chose in my collection that has that flirty, yeah, this is the only flirty fragrance. Signorina by Salvatore Ferragamo, and this is the EDP. 
this is very sweet and floral this is like your quintessential fruity floral fragrance um very famous during i would say early 2000s i got this fragrance because of heart evangelista or love marie escudero she described this fragrance as a flirty adventurous romantic kind of scent and it definitely is and um it is a very common scent like when i smell this i immediately thought of like a lot of other fragrances this one has a place of its own because it dries down to a different kind of scent this has panna cotta as one of the base notes and at first i didn't really get that gourmand note in the fragrance but the more that i wear this um, it is there it is very 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 faint though and um it fades away really fast but you know it's it's a great addition to that typical fruity floral scent so for the flirty aesthetic i chose signorina edp i as, as i said i could have chosen a lot of other fragrances but this one was my top choice when i thought of this video i decided to add another aesthetic of my own this is the spicy sensual aesthetic and I chose Wanted Girl by Azaro. So this is more of an orange blossom kind of fragrance for me. But it has those extra notes of ginger and dulce de leche in the base. Ginger I get a lot in the entrance. And dulce de leche, I didn't really get it at first. Just like how I didn't get panna cotta in um, Salvatore Ferragamo's Signorina EDP. But when you least expect it, when you just enjoy the fragrance as it is and not really like nitpick on the notes, that's where you appreciate the notes and that's where you get it the most. And that's the case with this one too. Like I just bathed myself with this fragrance. This is really, really nice. I wish this one lasted way longer than it does on my skin. I guess this one performs better during cooler weather. I'm not really so sure, but you know, I do get a good half a day with this one. So definitely syrupy, caramelly sweet with a body of orange blossom. And it has that spice of ginger. And I think this one has pink pepper as well, which adds that, you know, sensual spicy touch to it. So this is Azaro Wanted Girl. The last fragrance for today's video and the second one that I chose for the sensual spicy aesthetic. This one is Pure Honey from Kim Kardashian. This is one of her, I think, early 2000s fragrances. Um, I honestly was drawn to this one because of the bee. It's really cute. Look at that cute little bee in there. Pure honey. Um, this is a heavy bottle. If, if I can just move my tray a little bit. This is super heavy and the cap is plastic. So definitely not hold it by the cap. And um, as a scent, this is a strong white floral. Like I am super excited to try more Kim Kardashian fragrances. I will probably do that after my summer vacation this fall time. I will try the other... Um, Kim K fragrances from early 2000s. This one fits that spicy, sensual aesthetic. Even though it doesn't have spicy notes in it, this one has tons of um, beeswax and honey. It's more of a very honeyed white floral fragrance. I love this. Somehow it's a very calming scent for me to wear. Um, it is very strong. It is potent. It lasts super long. This one, as it dries down, it becomes a softer kind of a floral and it focuses more on honey so just by you know the whole bottle the name pure honey and the whole imagery of kim kardashian you're like i think of this one as a sofia vergara and this one is kim kardashian so yeah pure honey for that sensual spicy aesthetic that is it for today's video you guys these are the fragrances that i chose for the different kinds of aesthetics Don't forget to click the like button if you did enjoy today's content if you are not yet subscribed to the channel i hope you do consider subscribing help my channel grow like i always say in every single video have fun much love stay safe and see you in the next